I probably get something like 30, 40, 50 books a month. Uh, so what I have to do is whittle it down first, to, uh, probably down to about 10 or 12 books that are likely contenders for the great read. Of course, I get great encouragement from the publishers to choose it. Um, they love that kind of editorial support and of course anything with a great read sticker is a great recommendation. No one's ever offered me a bribe or anything like that. But uh, I do, I have had, and I've had um, one particular young writer not harass me, but ring me quite a lot about his manuscript. But of course, what happens once someone does that to you is the manuscript or the book goes further and further down the bottom of the pile because you finish up hating the idea of reading their books because of the campaign. And I think it's one of the reasons The Great Read has been really successful is that it's independent. It's independent of advertising in the magazine, independent of everything. So it has a reputation as being a recommendation that is not has no commercial pressures on it whatsoever. If I've got two fantastic books, and I love both of them equally, and one is written by an overseas writer and one is written by an Australian author, I'll always choose the Australian because I think that I should be supporting Australian writers. There's no one general rule, there's no one thing I can say flat out that makes it a great read, but I think the book that stops me doing my work, stops me answering my emails, writing, answering the phone, the book that actually stops me in my tracks and so engrosses me that I want to block out the rest of the world, that's the great read. I have heard stories about certain bookshops in Sydney that take off the stickers before they put the books on the shelves. Um, now, I think that there is a certain, uh, there, there are some people, but they're probably in the minority now, um, but I think there are some people who are snobs about the fact that it's a mass market women's magazine that's provided the sticker, but I think they're the same kind of people who are snobs about a book that's been really successful with women across the board, and I think it's sexist. Because I think what they're saying, they're putting down women's tastes. They're saying that because a large number of women have liked it or loved it or, or taken it up as a recommendation, uh, that it somehow devalues it. Well, I'm sorry. I think women read widely, passionately, um, in magazines and in books. And I, I think um, that their judgment of book is as relevant as some, yeah, some elitist snob who takes the sticker off the book. I know this is a great read, but you've taken the sticker off. Oh yes, some of my customers, they, they'd just be really put off if they knew it was recommended by the Australian Women's Weekly. Well, I happen to know the woman who actually awards these stickers and um, I know she picks good books. I'm a great reader and I love, I love the books she chooses. Well, actually, I've, I've read all the great reads and it's a great mixture of books. It's just an attitude amongst some of our customers. Could a man choose for a woman's market? No, the answer is probably no. I don't think so. Because part of it is this kind of, what would I call it, instinct, a kind of alchemy that happens that uh, is a bit of magic and I just think, I don't think a man would think the same way I do and I don't think he'd respond to writing the same way I do. Uh, so whilst I don't want to discriminate, I don't think a man could do it. I think there's something about that relationship with books and writing that I think I would probably prefer a woman to do it. Who knows, maybe they don't even notice who does it.